Okay, folks, step right up. This is our new circuit square wave. What we have here before your very eyes is a 500 kilohertz square wave. And what's going on here? Well, we need to talk about two things. We need to talk about what a square wave really is. We also need to talk about how the DSO Nano processes sampling rates when it views something. So this DSO Nano is perfectly happy displaying this as a square wave. And we'll dig in into a little bit and show you that it really is a square wave. And that the Nano is very happy and Nano is very comfortable with this being a square wave. Notice I'm looking up the, cal the probe compensator just like in the previous lessons. So there's no magic here. You can square wave onto this guy. That's what we're looking at. Okay, this is the same frequency output from the DSO Nano, but it's being piped into a more expensive oscilloscope, just a $380 oscilloscope by Regal. And what we're looking at here is a virtual display of the front panel of the oscilloscope. It's a USB connection, and we're looking at recreated data on the screen here, which is coming from inside the oscilloscope itself. So this screen represents the front screen of my oscilloscope. What I want to show you is that I changed the calibration probe frequency to 20 kilohertz. I was having issues reading at 10 kilohertz, I'm not sure why. But at 20 kilohertz you can see that it is still a square wave. And we have a measurement function here. Okay, you display all the measurements. You'll see the frequency is 20 kilohertz. Duty cycle is pretty close to 50%. The rise time and fall time is 800 nanoseconds. So it's less than one microsecond rise time and fall time. So I just want you to see this waveform that's coming out of the DSO Nano probe calibrator signal. It is in fact a decent looking square wave even though the DSO Nano doesn't see it that way when you put it on 500 kilohertz. Let's go up to 500 kilohertz on the Nano. We do an auto auto configure here. Let's go figure out how to display it. Notice it does say it's 500 kilohertz. Still got 80 nanoseconds rise and fall times, which are actually fairly good. Duty cycle is around 50%. So if we turn it off and look at it, I can do this. Measure, you turn it off. See, we do have some overshoot from the cheap cable that's being used. And uh, it's a pretty good square wave. We can change the time base, stretch it out a little bit. And notice this, DS, this Regal oscilloscope looks like it's taking three samples during the rise time. This is a one giga sample scope, so we're getting three samples during the rise time. That's why you see those vectors right there. So that's when you see it is a square wave. It's a pretty good square wave coming out of the DSO Nano. What we're looking at here is an animation of how you make a square wave. Basically you take a fundamental frequency sine wave, which is right now, and you keep adding the odd harmonics to it. So this is a spectrum analysis. Let's say it's a one kilohertz signal. This would be one kilohertz. This would be three kilohertz, five kilohertz, seven kilohertz, nine, da 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 down, down the line. So by adding all the harmonic frequencies, the odd order harmonic frequencies of the base fundamental frequency, you end up with the square wave. If you were to add infinite harmonics, you would end up with the perfect square cornered square wave. But in the real world you never get infinite harmonics therefore the square wave always has some takes some time to fall from there to there and that's called fall time. It takes time to go from here to here which is called rise time. 
So the rise time is never zero, the fall time is never zero because you can never have infinite odd harmonics. So that's what basically a square wave is made of. Because of these harmonic requirements to get to square corners, square waves are the hardest thing to look at on an oscilloscope. The band pass of the oscilloscope has to be five times the square wave you want to look at to get good results. That's a rule of thumb. So we only have a one megahertz oscilloscope. So the highest square wave we can look at would be around 200 kilohertz. There's more to this story. If you're not sure what a sine wave is, what a sine wave is, and go to your Tektronics manual reference. We talked about the XYZs of oscilloscopes. Page 11 explains a sine wave. And we'll get you straight on a sine wave. Then just remember a square wave, a square wave is simply the base fundamental sine wave plus an infinite number of odd harmonics of that base sine wave frequency. On page 23 of the Tektronics primer, they show a sine wave being sampled at this sampling rate, whatever that is. So many, each division is a new sample. And the sine wave, you notice down here, we use linear interpretation interpolation they call it, which is straight line vectors that connects the samples. So the sine wave looks like a series of straight lines. There's another type of sine wave vector connection which is sine x of x and we don't have that capability. But it would give you a French curve between sample points which give you a much smoother looking line. And more advanced oscilloscopes have this capability. But our DSO has to connect straight line vectors between the sample points. So I just wanted you to see how this relates to a sine wave. That you get these straight sample lines. It's a little difficult finding the DSO nano specifications, but here's one web page that does have it. You notice the analog bandwidth is 1 megahertz. Max sample rate is 1 mega samples per second. So that means you should be able to view a 1 megahertz sine wave successfully. And you should be able to view one-fifth of that 200 kilohertz square wave successfully. But we still have the limitations of the sample rate. Just because the bandwidth gets it into the processor doesn't mean the display will be worth looking at because the sample rate is going to affect how it looks. Okay, notice that our time division is two microseconds per division. The DSO Nano has a one mega sample per second sampling rate. Therefore, it's a one microsecond sample. So we're getting, during two microseconds, we're getting two samples. So for one division on here, we're getting two samples. You notice that right now we're triggering over here on the negative transition. Our trigger level is still in the center. So when the signal goes, the square wave goes negative, we're getting a trigger point right here. So let's flip the trigger over. And we'll set the kind reverse. Notice now the sample is being triggered up here at the top when the square wave goes high. So if a 500 kilohertz, kilohertz signal, well, one megahertz signal has a one microsecond cycle time. So a 500 kilohertz signal would have a two microsecond cycle time. So this is a positive transition for one microsecond, then it goes negative and goes back positive again. In two microseconds, it did one cycle. So we're looking at one cycle of a square wave. But it's only being sampled once every microsecond. So there's only two samples in the square wave, and these are the next two samples for the next one. So the square wave looks like a triangle, but it's only being sampled 
twice during the entire waveform of the square wave. And what the DSO Nano does when he finds a sample point, he draws a straight line to the next sample point. He draws a straight line to the next sample point. So what we're seeing is a triangular looking waveform because that's the vectors being used to build the waveform on the screen from the limited sample points. Now let's go up here and change the time base. Let's not do that. Let's change the frequency is what I want to do. The output frequency. We'll change the frequency or drop it down a little bit. Now let's look at it for a moment. Frequency is now 200 kilohertz. Got to stop and do the math. Here we're looking at a 100 kilohertz signal generated by the probe compensator. And you notice that our sample rate is still one sample per microsecond. So the, the grid display divisions here are one microsecond increments. So if you notice, the trigger occurs right here. And this is the fall time of the square wave. So one sample is taken there. The next sample is taken one microsecond later. So the fall could have finished way over here, but there was no sample over there. Therefore, the first sample you see is over here. So the oscilloscope says, i got to draw a line between the last sample and, and this sample, so it draws a straight line. So it looks all bent out of shape, when in fact the square wave probably isn't bent out of shape. So then it gets that sample, two, three, four samples in a row, it finds a square wave low. And on the fifth sample, it sees the square wave in transition. The square wave is going back up. And then on the sixth sample, it's not quite to the top yet. If you notice this level here, it's a little bit higher than this level. In fact, this is the mirror image right here. So between five and six, it sees this bend in the, in the rise time of the square wave. So these things distort the waveform. You have to understand what you're looking at. One microsecond per division, you only get one sample per division, draw straight vector lines between them. So if you go up here and reduce your time base, well, one microsecond as high as we can go. So that's reduce the signal. So let's go down and reduce the signal and see what effect that has. is 10 kilohertz. We'll go up and change the time base. You notice now we get 10 samples per division. So this transition fall right here looks pretty straight. It's 10 samples per division. Maybe two samples per little tick. So there's a two sample tick. I mean a two division tick, two division tick, two division tick. And we get those samples as it's falling, so it draws vectors between these samples, gives you a fairly vertical line for that transition. And once it's down, it gets uh, 10 samples per division, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, about 60 samples to draw that those vectors. So there's like 60 vectors there linked together. But once again, we're down to 10 kilohertz. So your sample rate will determine what you can look at. If you understand that a square wave can look like a triangle wave, then you can still look at a square wave as long as you understand that. So, so much for that. Notice that here we have a 300 kilohertz sine wave. It's pretty distorted, but once again, it's because of these sample points. This is a two microsecond per division horizontal time base, so there's two samples per division. You can see that there's a sample, that division line right here at the bottom. There's a sample halfway through a division and a second sample. 
So the sample rate's destroying our nice pretty sine wave. Let me bring the frequency up. Let's take the frequency down a little bit. By factor in 10, and look how smooth it is now. So we got 30 kilohertz, and the scope works fine. We can change the go the other way. I'm in single sweep right now. So 30 kilohertz is no problem. 300 kilohertz, the signal's there. The bandpass fed it into the processor, but the display is inadequate. So this, the display distorts it. Start to turn it into the triangular waves. So that's food for thought. Anytime you're looking at something, keep this in mind. Sampling rate really distorts things when the things are faster than the sample rate.